Our mission is to interest urban youth in astronomy and contribute to their education and career opportunities. Look through the finder till you aim at those lamps up there. Look at your mirror. Try to see what that would look like. Our goal now is to extend our model to embrace hundreds of more youth in Boston and across the country. Now rotate your left side. Now as you see, what do you oh. notice? In this effort, the Youth Astronomy Apprenticeship, or YAA, is continuing to train leaders for future sites, including youth who have already attended our programs. Formerly with little background in astronomy, select youth are already having an impact on their peers. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I did this, I put it right here. By assisting the facilitators of the individual sites and programs with teaching astronomy. The galaxy gives off the x -rays. And this is represented in this model. So the spiral galaxy lets off the light, and this is the detector. This is, represents the detector. Are there any questions? College students Kamiko Gregory, Philip Erelis, and Heleno DePina are taking on the challenge of teaching astronomy through project-based curriculum to the next generation. They are aided in this task by having attended a YAA after-school program, as well as summer apprenticeships. Because it's starting off fast because you guys have the tube like straight up, and that gives that ball a lot of speed. And so it starts off fast and then it kind of slows down and it speeds up a little bit towards the end. These apprenticeships have led to PowerPoint presentations, plays, planetarium shows is looking at, like, and, and outreach events in local communities. It's like, just like this, because of the mirror, you bend in the focal length. One apprenticeship focused on developing museum exhibits. Every idea for an exhibit was developed by the youth. Their ideas grew to prototypes that were tested by the general public. The game is you have to use the net to get as much of the packing peanuts so that you can basically win. So you're representing a black hole getting stuff in space. So on each side, there's three different kinds of black holes, which are the stellar, massive, and supermassive. So with those, you have bigger nets and smaller, smallest nets. So with that, you're gonna sh it shows the different sizes and the different gravitational pull between the three different kinds of black holes. Ready? Go. Got Gravity was ultimately included in a major exhibit on black holes. Last time I saw it, Got Gravity, it was in cardboard and there's pictures all over the place. <laughs> and now look at it. It looks nice. When we prototyped this, we learned our version of the God Gravity had many flaws. Nothing was working, and then after trial and error, we got it to work, and it was just amazing to see all the little kids having fun, asking questions. Many youth come into the program wide-eyed, and perhaps a little unsure what to expect about an astronomy program. Today we're doing this uh, hands-on telescope and light activity. So we have an amateur astronomer over there, his name's John. But soon youth are creating models of galaxies and studying the phases of the moon, the spectrum of light, and the inner workings of a telescope. Using Microobservatory, a network of robotic telescopes run by the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, all YAA youth take their own images of the cosmos. MKI and the CFA for letting us use the microobservatory cameras, which we took pictures with. And we appreciate all the help and knowledge that they have given us as ASAP coordinators, and we give great thanks and gratitude to them. At the end of each program cycle, youth are encouraged to present their findings to the public of their own research questions. We took these, these images with uh, microobservatory uh, telescopes. Uh -huh. And uh, we took them with three different filters. Yep. Uh, we took them with a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. In a Galilean rediscovery, 
and just a few weeks after taking her first astronomical images with micro-observatory, Kamiko Gregory made observations of four rotating satellites around Jupiter. But my project started with me seeing these dots moving. I know if they were moving. So these are random images that I observed, and I seen that in one image there were four dots on the left of Jupiter, and in the second image there were two dots on the left and two on the right, and in the third image there was one on the left and three on the right. And those dots that are around Jupiter are most likely moons orbiting Jupiter. In addition to public presentations about the results of their investigations, youth take part in outreach events at community centers. A black hole can kill you. When you see the the white stuff all around it being sucked in, that is most likely what a black hole looks like. Howard. Philip Erelis is one youth who is specializing in creating planetarium presentations aimed at local communities. Today our planetarium show will be based on three main stars. The first star is Dina. The second star is Vega. And the last star is Altair. Planetarium shows in the portable star lab is just one path for youth to engage the public about astronomy. Beyond the borders of our program, we can already see some of the impact YAA is having on our youth. This is a telescope. The filter will be placed in here. And what, for example, this is a blue filter. What it does, only the blue particles, only the particles of blue light will be able to come through. The green and the red will get stuck here. And Heleno de Pina is one of the more than 100 youth who participated in our pilot program. Using data he collected with microobservatory, Heleno earned a scholarship to the University of Massachusetts for his first place showing at the Massachusetts State Science Fair on the comet Holmes. Uh, basically my project is on, is on comet Holmes. Uh, comets, astronomers call them dirty snowballs because they're made out of ice and debris. Now in their third year of the YAA program, Kamiko, Philip and Heleno already facilitate training sessions for adults who will lead astronomy curriculum activities designed for middle school aged youth. So I'm the core and I can no longer fuse hydrogen into helium. So I push humors. Yes. And what happens to you? And I can try I get really, really hot because she's pushing inward on me. And eventually I'll start fusing helium into carbon and I'll push outward. However, it'll be a stronger force this time because the temperature in my core was much higher than it was the first time. And that's when we become a red giant. So as you notice, we're like a bigger star. If you really see it, the, the sun is in an angle. Mm -hmm. So it creates a contrast, you know, because the moon has all these hills and all that shadow will create a contrast. For example, see if it's a full moon, you won't be able to really see the craters because the light is just shiny at it, there's no contrast. So these training sessions include science teachers, astronomers, professional and amateur, and community center mentors. The purpose of the training is to bring astronomy to hundreds of more youth. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to look around this image, and I want you to find the lowest pixel value, also the highest pixel value. Kamiko, Philip, and Heleno are also in the process of being trained to facilitate YAA activities for after-school programs with high school-aged youth. What we're gonna do is get you guys are gonna take a hundred squares of toilet paper. We're gonna lay it out across the floor. And after we do that, we're gonna guess what you guys think the distance is of each object or planet is from the sun. Together, Kamiko, Philip, and Heleno will be furthering YAA's impact by acting as science ambassadors to Boston's community centers. They will begin the journey of the next group of youth astronomers. Oh, snap! Oh, oh. it gets dark. Oh.